Someone called David has requested that I take a look at this question. It's question 15 from the June 2021 paper one. So it's about the general journal um, and suspense accounts question called Peter. So what we're asked to do is we've got all these bits of um, additional information after the um, trial balance has been prepared. And it says that it did not balance. So if it did not balance, then they will have employed the use of a suspense account to force it to balance. So some of these errors may involve the use of the suspense account but others won't. All we're asked to do here is prepare entries in the journal required to make the necessary adjustments. Dates and narratives are not required. So just a reminder of the layout of the general journal, because they didn't give you any clues um, there. Apologies, it's a bit dark. Let's move that over a bit. Um, so you've just got to state the account name, so the journal number, the account name, which account is debited and which account is credited. So let's have a, a go at sorting these out then. So the first one is an invoice totaling 53,600 has been posted to motor vehicles account, but it included three and a half thousand, which related to vehicle maintenance charges. So this is an error of principle where something that is a revenue expense has been treated as capital. So all we've got to do then is debit the motor expenses account with the three and a half thousand pounds and credit motor vehicle. So we're removing that cost from the asset account and putting it in to the expense account. Okay, the next one, the number two, the sales account was undercast by 1575. So if something is undercast, it means there's not enough in there. So journal number two, we've got to correct the sales account. So we're going to do that. Remember, sales is always on the credit side because it's a type of income. So we're going to credit that with 1575. Now, because this is like a one-sided entry, there's no other corresponding error. Um, the other side of the entry is going to go to the suspense account. So remember, the suspense account is a dumping ground for when we fix those one-sided rue errors. So we sort out the account that's gone wrong. In this case, it was sales. Correct that and put the other half of the entry into the suspense account. OK, number three, a cash purchase for 560 was posted to the purchases account as 650. So at the moment, purchases has got 90 pounds, the difference between those two, too much in it. Purchases is an expense. It's on the debit side. So all we need to do to correct that then for number three is to credit purchases to reduce it by 90 pounds. Because it's a one sided error in this case of original entry, the debit um, side is wrong. We've got a debit of 650 and a credit in the cash account of 560. So the other half of the entry is going into the, oops, not suspenses, into the suspense account, 90 pounds there. Okay. Peter rents storage space for personal and business use. His drawings account has been debited with 2,500, which represents 25% private usage of the storage rental cost. So that means that the total is 10,000 pounds. So seven and a half thousand has gone through as a business expense, but the other two and a half thousand has been debited to his drawings. After discussion with his accountant, though, the private element, so this two and a half thousand, is going to be reduced to 20%. So what we need to do then is adjust for 5%. So 5% of that 10,000 is 500, and we're going to reduce the charge to his drawings account. So number four, we're going to charge um, rental expense account with the 500 pounds and we're going to credit his drawings so we're increasing the amount being treated as a genuine business expense and reducing the amount in his drawings okay right looks like we're going to need a calculator for this one um, in september 2020 1400 tires were purchased from kaplinson limited at a cost price of 35 pounds less a trade discount of six percent okay so we're going to work out 1400 tires times 35 is £49,000, and we're going to take the 6% off, 2940. So that means that the amount of the invoice was 46060. Remember, trade discount is deducted at source from the invoice. It doesn't appear anywhere in the double entry. Um, in October, 35% of the tyres purchased were returned to the supplier, and the credit note received was debited to both the Returns Inwards account and Kaplinson Limited. Well, let's find out what 35% is. First of all, so 460 times 35 percent is 16,121. That's the amount of the credit note that's been received. Now, the double entry when it's purchase returns is to debit the supplier account and to credit the purchase returns account. Now, they have debited returns inwards, and it should have been a credit to returns outwards. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is fix the returns inwards account. So, number five. 
returns inwards, there shouldn't have been a transaction in there. So we're going to credit that with 16121 to get rid of the transaction from there. Then we're going to put it into returns outwards, or purchase returns. So returns inwards is sales returns coming back in from customers. Returns outwards is purchase returns going back to your suppliers. Now that means that the suspense account is going to be needed to be debited with two lots of 16121, so 32,000. 242. Okay, so it's a one sided reversal. One half of the entry was um, on the correct side and in the correct account. The other half of the entry was on the wrong side and in the wrong account. So um, we've sorted all of that out there. Last one then, number six, in September 2020, goods totaling £15,000 were supplied on credit to Optical. This transaction has been correctly posted to the ledgers. In October 2020, though, 60% of the goods were paid for by optical, less a 2% cash discount, and this receipt has not been posted. Okay, so let's start with the 15,000. That's the total amount of the goods that were supplied. 60% of those, okay, so 60% is 9,000 pounds, were paid for, but they took a 2% cash discount. Now remember, cash discounts are recorded in the account, so 180 pounds in cash discount. So that means that the amount received is gonna be 8,820. Now, none of this has been posted at all, so we're going to have to, for number six, debit the bank account for the receipt, 8,820. We're going to have to um, credit the, what was the account number, optical account, which is going to be in the sales ledger. That's going to be credited with um, £9,000, the total amount, and then we've got, what have we got here, discounts allowed, it's going to be the balancing figure. So we're going to debit discounts allowed with £180. So what we've got to make sure, top tips with these journals, is to make sure that they all balance so that you don't make the situation worse. But remember that if the trial balance doesn't agree, we've got the use of a suspense account. But remember, not all errors are going to be corrected through the suspense account. Now, the second part of this question, quite straightforward, pretty standard question, really. Peter believes that if the trial balance balances, the financial records are accurate. Assess whether Peter's view is correct. Now, we've seen this question appear in the old specification in a very similar guise, you know, assess the usefulness of the trial balance um, in ensuring the accuracy of the financial statements or whatever. Um, but what you need to be talking about here is your errors. You remember your Coproc errors, six of them, commission, omission, principal, reversal, original entry, and compensating. Now, any of those six, when they're full errors, can be concealed in the trial balance. So the trial balance will still agree, but um, obviously there will be mistakes. And in the case of an error of principle, it can be quite a significant mistake that will affect the profit. Um, remember that the RUE errors, so ROO, reversal, omission, and original entry, if they're partial, will mess up the trial balance. So the trial balance will reveal those errors. So a partial reversal, a partial um, error of original entry and a partial omission. And if you're not sure about any of these, I think there is a video on the types of error in suspense accounts. So have a look at that one, one of the general ones that I've done. Um, and then just remember that things like an error of commission won't be revealed by a trial balance or by a sales ledger, or purchase ledger control account for that matter. Okay, so hopefully that's given you some ideas. Have a look at the mark scheme for some more information about this. But um, yeah, when you're asked to assess something, weigh up the pros and cons. So what is the trial balance good at? What is it not so good at? What kind of errors would be revealed? What kind of errors may still be hidden? Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.